Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I'm really happy because my animal plastics boa cages have arrived. Today I'm going to do a quick unboxing, show you the contents of this box containing the T8 boa cage from Animal Plastics. I have a second one that I ordered as well that I recently built, so I'm going to show you the completed finished cage and say a little bit about the best way to put these cages together. So if you're looking to buy a boa cage in the near future, stay tuned. So just a bit of background. This is called the T8 boa cage from Animal Plastics and it's a cage that's 48 inches or 4 feet by 24 inches or 2 feet for the floor space. The height is 12 inches or a foot. So it's a standard size for a kind of a medium size adult boa constrictor. Anywhere from 4 to 6 feet in length. And probably 90% of my adult boas are in that range. So it works for a lot of my adult boas. Larger boas, of course, you would want a bigger cage. So Animal Plastics is my favorite commercial uh, supplier of reptile cages. And I'll just say uh, I'm not paid by Animal Plastics. I don't receive any money. I'm just saying this based on my personal experience. Uh, I'm not a spokesperson for Animal Plastics. Animal Plastics, if you're watching, call me. Um, but anyway, I really like these cages. I think they're a really good value. They're very well built much more so than some of the other commercially available reptile cages that I've experienced. And so um, I ordered these cages a couple months ago. Um, actually, I ordered them in September. And this particular cage is one of the quick ship cages. It's one of their more common uh, sizes, so they have them pre-made. Um, one of the downsides right now with animal plastics is they take a long time to make, especially if you're getting one of the less uh, common sizes. It can take anywhere from you know four to, to six months or longer. Um, but because they're such a popular cage, of course, they're in demand. So if you're going to order one, it pays to order it well in advance for when you're going to need it. And I actually ordered these in September. They arrived around November. I wasn't in any real hurry, so I didn't get around to putting them together over the holidays, but uh, I finally had a chance to put them together. And I'm gonna share my experience with you. This isn't gonna be a full review. In the future, I'm gonna review, I'll review these cages in more detail go over the pros and cons. But today I'm just gonna do kind of a quick, you know, uh, unboxing and, you know, quick look at the one I put together right now with some tips for the best way to put these together. And I actually have a number of these cages already that I bought off of somebody that was getting off out of the reptile hobby. And I really liked them, although I didn't put them together myself. So this is my first experience putting them together myself. So this is the box. It's, you know, a four foot by a uh, two foot box by about four inches deep and uh, weighs probably around, I don't know, 40, 45 pounds. Um, but it comes stapled and I would recommend that you remove all of these staples using a needle nose pliers. And I've actually removed most of them already, you know, but just pull them completely out because these are some really sharp sun bitches and you don't want them scratching the hell out of your arm when you go to reach for your new animal plastics cage. So I've removed the staples and the unit comes really well packaged. I'm just going to slide this down. But they, they, always, they obviously have their um, operation really well oiled because this is a very professional, very professionally packaged. You know, my overall impression is that this is a really high quality uh, snake cage. As I mentioned, I've had experiences in the past with a lot of more mom and pop reptile cage suppliers and the craftsmanship is just severely lacking, but I found the craftsmanship in, of this cage was really, really great. And the packing was really great as well. Okay, so now we're unboxed and this is it. Um, so you can see it's really well packaged. I ordered the version with the sliding glass front. They offer a version with, you know, like a hinged um, door as well, but I prefer the sliding glass ones. These are the two glass panes, so I'm just going to put these aside for now. And so in this um, package, there's basically the top, the bottom, the sides, the front and the back. As well as the hardware uh, that you're going to need to put it together. And so 
These animal plastics cages are really well made. And they're also super easy to put together. Okay, all you need is a simple Phillips screwdriver. It takes at most an hour, including sealing the, sealing the cage. And someone that's done this before could probably put one of these together in like half an hour. So real simple. If you've ever assembled something from Ikea, it's like that, but even easier because there's actually instructions in English. You don't have to decipher these crazy Swedish hieroglyphics. So right here, we're gonna just we're gonna cut out the packaging. So here are those instructions I was talking about. I suggest you read the instructions. It's really you know, not hard to figure out, but the instructions tell you the order that you're gonna screw this thing together. And right here are the screws. They're just simple one inch screws. They're all the same screw. You don't have to worry about different types of screws or anything like that. Um, and the whole thing just screws together and the sides match up like a glove. Uh, the, the holes are all pre-drilled. You don't have to worry about, you know, making holes or anything like that. And so you can use an electric screwdriver, but I decided rather than electric to just use a manual screwdriver because it says in the instructions, you don't want to use too much torque because if you over torque it, you can end up stripping the screw. And it's so easy to assemble with just a regular screwdriver. You don't even need the electric screwdriver. This is kind of a ratcheting screwdriver, which might make it a little easier, but even if you have just your regular Phillips screwdriver, it works fine. So these are the two sides. And you know, another really nice thing about these cages, it clearly says left side, top, front. So it tells you exactly the orientation it goes in. And you can see these are really well, well um, machined. Very nice craftsmanship. Uh, I've seen so many, you know, reptile cages that just, they're just not up to snuff, but these are, you know, definitely really nice. You can tell that Animal Plastics has been around a while. They've really, you know, uh, gotten everything perfect and you don't have to deal with, you know, a uh, thing, that, uh, a product that's not gonna be really well crafted. And we have four other main pieces. This is the front, and it shows you the cutaway where the sliding glass windows are gonna go. Here's the back. And then we have the bottom and the top piece, okay? And as I mentioned, the nice thing is that it's clearly labeled. It says front piece and has a little arrow pointing up so you know exactly the orientation of the pieces. This is a finished cage that I built just the other day. Just gonna give you a quick look at this. So here's the sliding glass front. And you can see inside the cage there, it's got these ventilation slots. Um, you can see the track that the sliding glass fits in on the top and bottom, really well made. And you know, it's basically, it's pretty simple construction. It's just a plastic box with a sliding glass front, you know which works really well for the BOAS. And you can see all the screws that hold the unit together. Here's a quick look at the side and the top of the cage. As I mentioned, nothing real uh, complicated about the design, just a plastic box. But you can see the all the screws, it's got lots of screws going down the sides and back and top, really holding it together securely. And then another nice thing about this is, for the most part, the fit and finish is really nice. You can see it just lines up almost perfectly and just a really well-crafted uh, piece of reptile equipment. Now for a few tips on the best way to assemble these cages. So as I mentioned, the, one of the benefits of the animal plastics cages is this really nice, clear instructions. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to read these instructions. Even if it seems obvious how you put this thing together, which it pretty much is, make sure you read the instructions because it uh, recommends you do it in a specific order. And if you don't do it in that order, you may have to take it apart and go back and redo it again. So just read the instructions, at least the first time you build one of these cages. 
Also, as I mentioned, you don't want to use a power screwdriver unless it's set to a very low setting. And because it's so easy and quick to put this thing together, I recommend just a hand screwdriver, like this ratcheting model. Um, once you have uh, assembled most of it, you're going to want to put the top on. That's one of the last steps. But I would recommend that you don't put the top on completely because you're going to want to seal the cage with this silicon sealant, um, you know, before it's done. So put the top on, you know, put up maybe half of the screws in the top, and then you're going to want to put the bottom and the back screws in so that it's all complete. But then you're going to want to take the top off to put the sealant on. And so even if you put all the screws in the top, you're probably looking at maybe an extra five minutes to unscrew everything. So, you know, no big deal. But it's a lot easier to put the sealant on if you take the top off. You know, just trust me, you don't want to try to get inside the cage and spread the sealant. It's just really, you know, a pain in the ass. So uh, they supply the sealant. You don't have to buy the sealant, which is nice. It's all included. You're going to put a bead of sealant across the bottom on all four sides and then up the sides as well. Okay, and then you're going to wet your finger and just gently rub the bead in. You want enough so that you can see the sealant, but you don't want it kind of overflowing. Um, you know, when I first did it on the front and back, I didn't quite put enough. So I just waited a day till it had dried. I went back and put some more. But you're going to want the sealant because when you have a screw, a, a cage that screws together, one of the downsides is that it can leak uh, fluids or you know, if your snake has a particularly liquidy feces, it might squirt out the side, which is probably something you want to avoid. So you're going to want to seal it really well. Um, using the sealant, again, put a lot, put enough that you have, there's this, you can see the rubberized caulking in there because you're not going to want to have anything leak. And in fact, my buddy who I bought the cages off didn't even use this stuff. He got this fancy uh, 3M marine sealant. It's used on boats and he swears by this stuff. And you know, his, the cages have never leaked. I've had them for like five years now. The sealant still looks perfect. If you want to try this marine sealant that works even better, you know, knock yourselves out. But I think this stuff will work quite well as long as you put enough of it on and you spread it neatly. So take your time, you know, don't do a rush job. You want the sealant to, you know, do its job and prevent the liquids from spraying out. One thing to be careful about though when you're putting sealant on is that your cage is clean. And what I noticed is that because of uh, electric, static electricity, you know, they, it's winter now, the air is kind of dry, and there's lots of little pieces of styrofoam from the packing. Stuff really sticks to the, to the plastic. So what I did is I sprayed it down with uh, chlorhexidine disinfectant just to get all of the little dust and dirt out because you don't want that getting caught up in the sealant. You want a nice clean surface before you apply the sealant. The sealant, uh, you know, it takes just a few minutes to apply. It, they recommend you give it like a week to cure before you put reptiles in there. It looks, you know, pretty dry after about a day, but just give it a few more days to completely cure. There's some kind of a um, hydrocarbon solvent, benzene or something, hopefully not benzene, but some kind of solvent in there that, you know, that smells, so you might want to work in a ventilated area unless you enjoy the smell of these solvents. Um, but you want the solvents to completely dissipate before you put any reptiles in there. So the last thing I want to mention is that the cages come with these little stacking pins okay these little metal pins and what's nice about this system is there's these little cat indentations in the front on both the top and the bottom and you can put the pins in there i don't know if you can see that on camera but then you can stack another cage of the same design right on top and the pin sticks in there and it kind of holds them together which provides more support especially if you live in earthquake country like i do um, it would you know, provide some protection if the, in case there's, uh, there's an earthquake. You know, that being said, I'm probably not going to use these. Um, the, the cages that I have already, my buddy used a, a furring strip, a strip of one by two, and he put three of them. And so they stack on top with this little one inch gap between each cage. And I think that's really nice for uh, accessing the uh, under the tank heating and so you can run thermostat probes and things like that. So I probably won't use these, but 
it's a nice option to use them if you're so inclined. And I believe that you can probably stack different size animal plastics cages together as long as you have these little stacking pins. I have just one really minor gripe with this cage and that's that there's a small ding in the front on the top. It's maybe about a centimeter or so in diameter, just this little kind of ding. And I'm pretty much positive that it didn't, didn't incur this ding after the ride because I unpacked it really gently and you know inspected all the pieces and the ding was there when it came. So not a huge big deal. It doesn't at all affect the functionality of the cage, but you know, I would have preferred if it didn't have the little ding. But you know, no big deal. So that's the animal plastics cage. I'm gonna do a complete review of all the pros and cons in a little bit of time after I get this set up with a snake inside. Um, but overall, really great cage, very well crafted and you know very well designed. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful if you're planning on buying a cage in the near future. As always, shoot me any questions or comments. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.